Going into the 2020 NFL Draft, Ohio State edge defender Chase Young was seen not as a mere prospect, but more as some kind of mythical creature. He had a polished arsenal of pass rush moves which drew comparisons to his fellow Ohio State alums Nick and Joey Bosa, combined with freakish athleticism similar to Cleveland Browns superstar Miles Garrett. Many analysts labeled him as the best pass rusher they had ever scouted with generational talent and Hall of Fame potential. The numbers that Young put up during his rookie season, however, were somewhat disappointing. He totaled 6 sacks on 40 pressures, both of which ranking first among rookies, but nowhere close to Nick Bosa's absurd 80 pressures during his 2019 rookie campaign. Young's tape, though, tells a much more encouraging story, not necessarily of dominance like Bosa's, but of development, progress, and potential. Before I get into how Young developed over the course of his rookie season though, let me first explain the root of his struggle, specifically as a pass rusher, by quickly summarizing the basics of offensive line play. Traditionally, offensive linemen are taught to punch the opposing pass rusher's chest and anchor their feet in order to stop the defender's momentum. But using this technique exclusively doesn't work in the NFL because modern pass rushers build their arsenal of moves around the objective of neutralizing a punch. Take a look at this matchup between Eagles All-Pro right tackle Lane Johnson and Cowboys All-Pro edge rusher Demarcus Lawrence. As Lawrence closes the gap between himself and Johnson, he takes a jab step and leaves his chest exposed, which gets Johnson to shoot his outside hand and anchor his feet. But just before the punch lands, Lawrence chops down Johnson's right wrist and blows by him for a strip sack. Pass rushers need to have a go-to move that they can rely on to neutralize a punch, and Ohio State defensive line coach Larry Johnson has been instrumental in developing some of the NFL's best pass rushers on a move that he calls side scissors. The move aims to bait an offensive lineman into punching, then to neutralize that punch with a two-armed swipe, which is why some coaches call it the swipe move. Joey Bosa is one of the best in the business when it comes to side scissors, and this play from back in 2019 against Chicago is a great example, because it illustrates not only how to properly execute the move, but also why it can be so effective. When Bosa's closing the gap between himself and Bears right tackle Bobby Massey, he gives a slight stutter step, which draws out Massey's hands. Bosa reacts with a two-armed swipe, but he doesn't win on the first attempt because of where he placed his swipe. Coaches emphasize targeting the weak points of the tackle's arm, the elbow, and the wrist when trying to defeat a punch, and Bosa's swipe with his right arm was effective because it hit the tackle's elbow, but his left swipe landed on the tackle's forearm. Massey's outside arm didn't give way to Bosa's first swipe because Bosa didn't hit one of the weak points. But that brings me to what sets side scissors apart from other pass rush moves, which is pass rushers can use the move multiple times in one rep. After his first attempt didn't work, Bosa reset his feet and did it again, this time hitting both of Massey's elbows and getting into the pocket for a pressure. One way that tackles counter the side scissors move is by oversetting to the outside in their kick step in order to force the pass rusher to beat them with an inside counter move. And another great thing about side scissors is it can be used as a counter as well. A considerable amount of Nick Bosa's pass rushing success during his rookie year can be attributed to his lethal counter swipe, which was on display in his rookie debut against Tampa Bay. On this play from the fourth quarter, Bucks tackle Donovan Smith oversets way outside, opening a counter lane for Bosa to attack. He explodes off of his outside jab step and swipes back inside for a hit on the quarterback. Now, NFL offensive linemen have developed a technique to counter modern pass rush moves themselves, which most coaches call the hug technique. Popularized by former Green Bay Packers offensive line coach James Campen, the hug technique is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Instead of punching first and aiming the punch at the pass rusher's chest, the hug technique tells linemen to leave their chest exposed and get their hands on the outside of the pass rusher once contact is made. Packers All-Pro left tackle David Bakhtiari has become a master of the hug technique, and a good example of why it's so effective is this play from Week 15 against Carolina. Notice how Bakhtiari leaves his chest completely exposed while Panthers edge rusher Brian Burns is approaching him, and doesn't punch at all. Burns tried to use a cross chop, but because Bakhtiari didn't punch, Burns had nothing to chop at. So when Burns chopped at the air, Bakhtiari used the hug technique to lead him to the back of the pocket away from Aaron Rodgers. By now you've probably picked up on the theme of this mini history lesson in offensive and defensive line play, which is the inevitable fact that all moves and techniques on either side of the ball have counters, and the hug technique is no exception. The weakness in the hug technique is the fact that the offensive lineman leaves his chest completely exposed and does not anchor his feet, which makes him susceptible to a bull rush, and that's where we finally get to what Chase Young struggled with during his rookie campaign. Early on, Young completely lacked a bull rush, or at least just refused to use one, which allowed tackles who had no business competing with him to shut him down in the pass rush. In Week 10 against Detroit, Young's pass rush wins were few and far between, not because he was outmatched athletically, but because he was outmatched technically. Take this play as an example. Young attempts a counter swipe, but swipes at nothing because Lions right tackle Tyrell Crosby never punched and used the hug technique. 
Crosby used a hug technique pretty much all game when he lined up against Young and never got beat once because Young just refused to turn his speed to power and bull rush. Now I want you to look at this play from later in that same game against Detroit because it perfectly encapsulates all of Young's struggles and how he needed to fix them. This time, Young lined up on the opposite side against Lions tackle Taylor Decker, who, unlike Tyrell Crosby, had yet to familiarize himself with Young's tendencies. Decker still tried to use the hug technique, but went for his punch too early, which allowed Young to swipe inside and get a pressure. But what I really want to emphasize is the matchup on the other side. Ryan Kerrigan noticed that Tyrell Crosby was using the hug technique to stop Chase Young all game, so he took advantage of Crosby's exposed chest by bull rushing. Until a tackle gets beat with a bull rush, they're going to continue to use the hug technique, and Chase Young found that out the hard way. In college, he was so athletically gifted that he didn't need to worry about bull rushing much because his side scissors move was so effective. But in the NFL, tackles are far too technically refined to get beat by one move over and over again. Young has the athletic tools required for a reliable bull rush. But for the majority of the season, it was difficult to figure out how good his bull rush really was because he barely ever used it. In week 5, he had an absolute beauty of a bull rush against Rams tackle Andrew Whitworth. Before making contact, he built up speed. Then the timing and placement of his hands were perfect, right on Whitworth's inside shoulder pad while his chest was exposed. Young's hands were violent as he pushed toward the quarterback, and he stayed low to maintain the leverage advantage. In week 13, however, Young had a bull rush where he didn't build up speed, and left his feet before making contact. His upper body is so strong that even with the subpar technique, he was still able to generate movement, but not enough to affect the quarterback. For more than half of the 2020 season, Young seemed to have no idea when to bull rush, whether he could do it or not, but all that began to change late in the season. In week 14, Young faced his greatest challenge yet in 49ers left tackle and future Hall of Famer Trent Williams. On his first pass rush of the game, Young tried to use his side scissors move but swiped at nothing because Williams didn't punch and used the hug technique. Just a few plays later though, Young actually did attempt a bull rush and even though he was stopped, my eyes lit up when I saw this play on film because up until this point, Young's bull rush usage was mostly random, but that was not the case here. Pass rush wins against Trent Williams are extremely rare, so I don't care all that much about the fact that Young lost the rep and many others like it. The important thing is that he identified the opposing tackle's technique and exploited it to the best of his ability, which finally resulted in a real win with a bull rush late in the fourth quarter. Young's newly found understanding of how to beat the hug technique enhanced his production as a pass rusher, and allowed him to use some other moves that hadn't been effective before he brought the threat of a bull rush. Early in his Week 16 game against Carolina, Young picked up on Panthers tackle Trent Scott's use of the hug technique, so he bull rushed. The power of Young's bull rush opened Scott's hips, which allowed Young to disengage and get to the quarterback. Just a few plays later, Young faked a bull rush, which caused Trent Scott to anchor, then he showed off that crazy bend by getting a hand on the quarterback's arm and causing an interception. Young's bull rush still needs work, but the fact that he began to use it on a more consistent basis toward the end of the season caused his pass rushing production to jump significantly. Before week 14, Young had a pressure rate of just 7.1%, but in weeks 14 through 17, his pressure rate jumped to 12.1%. A 12% pressure rate is by no means game-breaking. It's still pretty far off from that of the league's best pass rushers like Shaq Barrett, TJ Watt, and Miles Garrett, but Young's performance toward the end of the season showed improvement. And I believe that a slight schematic adjustment from the Washington coaching staff could help Young's pass rush performance even more. Defensive line alignment is typically identified by a numbered technique, and the higher the number, the further away from the center. So a zero technique is aligned head up on the center, meaning he isn't shaded inside or outside, and a wide nine technique is aligned outside of the tight end. Aligning pass rushers in the wide nine technique can help them build up speed on their way to the quarterback, and also help them identify the technique of the offensive lineman they're going up against. During Nick Bosa's 2019 rookie season, he aligned in the wide nine technique 70% of the time in passing situations, and in 2020, Joey Bosa did 82% of the time. Now, Chase Young only aligned in the wide nine technique 22% of the time in passing situations last year, and because he uses the same string of primary pass rush moves as the Bosa brothers, I think aligning him outside more often would help him get to the quarterback. I'm going to use this play against Dallas as an example of why I think Young would benefit from wide alignment more often. He's lined up about a yard off the offensive tackle's outside shoulder, and he tries to bull rush, but he only took two steps before making contact. Because of the narrow alignment, Young didn't have the space to build up speed, so he approached the tackle with very little power, making his rush weak and predictable. That lack of speed and power allowed Cowboys tackle Cam Irving to use what's known as a forklift technique by redirecting Young's punch above his frame. 
Now look at this play. Joey Bosa is aligned in the wide nine technique outside of the tight end, which provides a good two yards of space between himself and the opposing tackle. Bosa takes advantage of this space by building up speed, which he turns to power, and nearly forces the tackle into his own quarterback. Bosa didn't make contact with the protection until his fifth step, compared to Young's two steps on the last play. Aligning Young in the wide nine technique would help him develop a more deadly and consistent bull rush, but I wouldn't align him there in passing situations because aligning so far outside limits an edge's impact in run defense, which is an area where Young really shines on tape. Take a look at this play from week two against Arizona. The Cardinals are running wide zone to Young's side with a couple of decoys moving the opposite way across the formation. After the snap, Young quickly identifies the zone blocking technique from Arizona's offensive linemen, so he mirrors their bucket steps and keeps his eyes in the backfield. On wide zone, running backs are taught to read the opposing defensive linemen from outside to inside and make one cut based on the leverage of those defensive linemen. Many coaches teach their running backs to key the defender's helmets, so if the helmet is inside of the blocker's helmet, that means they're sealed inside and the gap to the outside of that lineman is open. So here, Kenyon Drake sees that Chase Young's helmet is well inside of his tackles, which tells him that he can bounce this run to the outside. But at the last second before Drake hits the line of scrimmage, Young disengages to the outside and forces the cutback. He didn't make the tackle himself, but defending the run requires everyone on the defense to do their job, and the one who makes the tackle rarely works alone. Young's performance against the run was impressive to say the least. He's already a much better run defender than some of the league's best pass rushers, which is an underrated quality in the modern NFL. He's quick to diagnose run plays by identifying the technique of the offensive lineman, he has the ability to two-gap, which is a rare quality in an edge defender, and he had the lowest amount of missed tackles among edge defenders who played over 700 snaps last year. Young's numbers may have been disappointing to some Washington fans considering the hype surrounding him going into his rookie season, but he showed more than just flashes. He showed dominance as a run defender, he showed clear development as a pass rusher, and he still possesses the same sky-high potential that made Washington pick him second overall. Progression takes time and experience, and at age 22, Young is still one of the youngest players in the league. When he does reach his full potential, watch out because this Washington defensive line is going to be even more nasty than they already are. They're big, they're fast, they're powerful, and they're coming for your team's quarterback. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Most of my videos get copyright flagged and demonetized, so if you'd like to support me and the growth of my channel, check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Information on the X's and O's side of football is not always easy to find, and I know a lot of you guys are just as obsessed with learning about the game as I am, so I post articles and videos every week that helped me when I first started watching film. I know a lot of people are dealing with difficult financial situations right now, so please only donate if you're absolutely able to. Otherwise, you can check out my Twitter in the description and stay tuned for future videos. But that's all I've got for you guys for now, so thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.